Hey, what's up guys? This is gonna be a quick tutorial about coin spinning. This is for a subscriber named Lacan Benedict 2887 He asked, please, could you do a tutorial for a coin spin? Been playing around it, but it doesn't come out most times. Oh, I think he means playing around with it. So this should be pretty easy. I'm gonna start off uh, with a blank canvas. I'm gonna go ahead and hit Control G to bring up the grid. Then I'm going to use Draw Shapes and then use the oval tool. And I'm gonna hold down Shift and Alt and click in the center and drag that out. That way we have the center point right in the middle. So it's really easy to do. Place artwork and spin it. I went ahead and downloaded a picture of a quarter and I'm going to import it onto this circle. So I'm going to click Advanced. And then for some reason, you have to do it on Effect Two to add the image because I don't know why but effect one doesn't work so I'm gonna click on effect two and select image texture and then select texture and then you can see I've got a picture here of a quarter and it actually has the front and the back and that's okay we can use that um, and just move the artwork around so I'll do don't repeat because we're not going to tile it and hit OK and where is it I don't see it. Image texture, select texture. There it is. Okay, it showed up. So let's do don't repeat. And now I'm gonna just arrange or move the artwork. We'll do the heads first. And you can move it by clicking on this, the dark red circle and then resizing it with this uh, top circle. And I'm just going to do a pretty horrible job of aligning it. I'm going to turn the sh stroke off too, just so it's a little easier to see. We'll call that good. So we've got the uh, heads of the coin. And then I'm going to go ahead and rename this. I'll just call it heads. And then I'll duplicate the artwork. And we'll call this tails. And this, this works out really well that we have the artwork on the same image because now I can just click on this, move it over. And we have the other side of the coin. It's not perfect, but get close to it. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the artwork in 3D space just a little bit, just so we have a thickness of the coin. So I'm going to turn off the grid. Command G <clears throat> and then with tail selected, I'll go ahead and select the transform layer tool and in the Z option for Z depth, I'm going to type in 0 0.01 and that's going to move it slightly forward towards the camera. And then I'm going to select heads and I'll go ahead and type in negative 0 0.01 and then hit enter. And in order for this to work, you need to have your layers in a group or a folder. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a folder. And I'll just call it coin. And I'll drag that to the top. I'll select tails and heads, layers, and then drag those into the folder. And then select the folder so I can move them both at the same time. And I'm just going to show you what's going on real quick with the rotate uh, XY tool. So if I rotate this, you can see we have a flat image of the back of the coin and the front of the coin. But something that's not working is when I flip this, it's just showing the reverse image of the tails. And that's because in our folder, we're not uh, using depth source. So you need to double click on the folder. Select depth sort, sort layers by depth, and apply and hit OK. And now when I turn it, you can see that we have the heads and the tails. But the head side is reversed. So let's go ahead and fix that really quick. We'll select heads. And I'm going to select the transform layer tool and flip, flip it using this horizontal uh, flip button right here. So it flips correctly. So now if we select the folder again and I rotate it, you can see now that we've got the correct image for the left and right. 
and it's almost ready to go. We just need to fill in that gap that I've made in between the coin. I'm gonna reset the rotation real quick and type in 90 degrees just so you guys can see exactly what's going on. If you look really closely, you can see there's the uh, heads and there's the tails right there. But we wanna put a little uh, piece of 3D artwork right in between. So let's reset the um, view again. We'll go ahead and clone either one of the layers, heads or tails. I'll go ahead and do tails. I'm going to duplicate that. And just for a second, I'm going to turn off the other two layers. And I'm gonna take the um, image out because we don't need it. So I'm gonna hit Q and then select it and then turn this back into plain so it doesn't have anything in it. And I'm gonna go ahead and select gray for the color of the coin. And you can make it whatever you need. And so it's just a plain circle, but it's the same size as the other two pieces of artwork. And we're gonna make it 3D, so I'll double click it, the layer, select 3D options, select extrude, and then apply and okay. And you're gonna see if I rotate the uh, folder, it's way too thick. Um, I'll turn on the heads and tails again, and I'm gonna put that 3D layer in between the two. But like I said, it's way too thick and it looks really weird. Oops. Rotate, make sure you're always rotating the folder and not the uh, individual pieces of artwork so they stay together. So we just need to make this really thin. So on frame zero, select that 3D layer. I'm gonna hit Q and make sure I have it selected. And actually, let me turn off those layers again so you can see. Make sure it's selected. You can tell it's selected by that checkered pattern. That's where the actual artwork is. And while it's selected, type in thickness. We'll go ahead and type in 0 0.05, maybe. Maybe even smaller than that. It's gonna have to be 0 0.005. That might be too thin. Uh, let's turn those back on the heads and tails. And then also, since this was a copy of the tails um, artwork, we need to make this Z position just zero. So it's right in the center. So click on that and type in zero. So it's right in the middle of the two pieces of artwork. And let's rotate it. And we have it in there and it fits pretty good, but it's black. Hold up, wait a minute. I think that's because I have a stroke on there. I don't. I'm not sure why it's showing up black. It might be big. Let me check on both of these. Uh, tails. Doing that. Let's double click on the creases and thresh. Oh, that's probably why, because it's showing on the 3D extrusion. Let's take off silhouettes. There we go. Oh, now I see. Now I get it. Okay, now it doesn't have a uh, stroke on it. So let's, oh, I rotated some stuff. Let's go back to reset. I messed something up. I moved something. Oh, there we go. Reset the XY rotation on the 3D object. Now, if I rotate the coin. Okay, there we go. And I'm gonna leave all this stuff in just because this is what really happens when you're trying to make something. You mess up a lot and you gotta figure out how to fix it. So, now that we got everything fixed, I'll reset the view real quick and then I'm going to go to frame one and let's see let's go and what I want to do is use the XY rotation on the folder so I'm going to click on this and in the Y rotation I'm just going to move it over a little bit so it rotates 
but then I'm going to type in zero again. So it's just all that it's doing is making a keyframe. And the reason I want to do that is so the coin is facing us and then I can go to frame 24 or whatever and then type in 360. So it does a complete spin. So from frame one to 25 or 24, does a complete spin. And we want it to keep spinning at the same speed. So let's go ahead and right click on the first keyframe and click uh, linear. And then on the second keyframe, go ahead and right click and select cycle. And we have a spinning coin. Hey, that's pretty good. And it's 3D. And we can also um, change the speed really easy by just moving the uh, second keyframe. So if I make it shorter, it's going to spin faster. If I make it longer, you can do slow motion, bullet time it. And then with it spinning, you can go ahead and animate the layer folder. So I can go to frame one, use the transform layer tool, move it over here. Whoa. Move it to the left and then go to frame 48 and grab it and move it over here. And it'll spin while it's moving. Oh, let's do linear on that first keyframe so it doesn't speed up like that. Let's make that way longer so you can see it spin across. Or if it's going across the table or something, you can make it spin faster like that. There you go. And that's it. Um, hope you guys found this tutorial helpful and thanks for watching.